Sue. Yes. Yeah, and today is the 4th of June. And that is significant because it marks the day we started our travel a year ago That's in 2019. Right. It is a 2020, June 4th, the year of something, 2020. <laughs> and since we are in Southeast Asia and there is so much going on in the world, we thought today would be a perfect day to discuss the elephant in the room. I guess you can call it that. Yeah. The black elephant in the room. Right. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to talk about being black in Southeast Asia and being a member, a card carrying member of the LGBTQI community. If you didn't know, Amber and I are married. I don't know how you didn't know that. <laughs> but if you didn't know, now you know. So stick with us or click out. But anyway. Indeed. Right, so today we're going to talk about being black um, in Asia and our travels and our experience so far and tie that into being black and gay because they're all, they're all tied together for us on yeah. this experience, right? Yeah. So, something always in the forefront of our minds. Always, always. I mean, our skin color is very obvious, but our sexuality is not, but it's definitely there for both of us. Um, in regards to where we go, how we think we're going to be treated, and any research we do to prepare ourselves for that. Absolutely. All right. So, let's start out with racism. A lot of people have asked, does it exist in Southeast Asia? I don't, I don't, I mean, there are humans here. Right. Right. And humans, human. Yep. To the best of their ability, boy. I tell you. They were human all dang day. And so that means there is racism. Mm -hmm. Now, let's equate that to racism in the United States. It is not the same. It's not, honestly, not even anywhere close. Racism in America is something that's in the soil. It's uh, been ground into the dirt with the blood of our ancestors. And it is just not going away anytime soon, which is why. There are protests every day going on right now. With that being said, there's still racism here in Southeast Asia. There's racism against us. There's racism against um, themselves. Darker skin. Yeah. People. Yeah. I mean, the, the racism in, in Asia that I've seen is uh, inspired by racism in America and white media. What do you think? You mean the racism toward black people, specifically? Oh, yeah. yeah, toward okay. black people. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, absolutely. I mean, you know, people, it, you say, people say, you know, people believe what they see on TV, and that is most likely true, is, you know, what they see of us mm -hmm. on television is not always um, beneficial or true to right. us. So that's what they see, and that's what they tend to believe until they learn different. So that's the whole point of really of us and more of us being in different um, spaces all over the world so that everyone, so that our image is varied across the world. Right. It's not just kind of one perspective. So that's part of why we're here. Right. I mean, the media glare has been definitely, I mean, we see that in America today, movies that are coming out that are by us, for us. Um, versus movies even say 10, 15 years ago yeah. that were directed by someone white, written by someone white, but they were talking about us and our story, and that's just not possible. You can't tell a story that you've never um, lived in. You know, yeah. you can, I mean, and I'm not saying we're not talking science fiction, we're talking about reality based stories here. So that filter, that lens rather, has been on, Amer on black Americans or black people in general um, for hundreds of years. And what's been pushed out there, the narrative that's been pushed out there, of course, is a very negative one. Right. Um, so when we came to Southeast Asia, we were expecting that lens. We were expecting that viewpoint. And we were expecting, um, I think, more than what we actually received. Oh, no, that's true. I mean, I'm sure we were probably a little bit paranoid. Um, and, you know, rightfully, rightfully so. so, right. Um, more, probably more than we needed to be because mm -hmm. we certainly didn't get um, as much as we thought um, that we might, but still, I mean, we have to. Yeah, be when aware. we got it, mm -hmm. I think it pissed us off even more. 
because there was no reality for it. Like we're here, mm -hmm. we obviously have the money to get here. We're not big packers on the street, which co coincidentally are mostly white people. Um, we're paying good money, uh, we're shopping, um, and we, we just don't fit, fit the, ter uh, the typical stereotype that they've been led to believe that we're gonna come here and steal something. There's right. nothing to steal. Um, I mean, not to me anyway. Nothing that I want to steal in a foreign country, right. being a black American and being gay, being a lesbian. Why would I want to come over here, break rules, and go to jail over here? This doesn't make any sense to me. Now, I'm not saying people don't do it. I'm just saying for us, it right. just wasn't logical. And so when we were followed in stores, I was just like, are they, are they really following us in here? As we're basically trying to decipher whatever language that we're looking at into English, trying to find a pot, a pan, a shirt, or whatever. Um, and so it would anger us at that moment. And then we, you know, we'd move on with our day. Um, and we think about all times in America that we've been followed. Yeah, it does bring, it brings those things back because you've experienced it. If you're black in America, mm -hmm. you've likely experienced that. So, um, and I do think it's a little different here. So to be fair, I do think that, that they, that there's a little more attention given to customers in stores in general than we're used to mm -hmm. in the states like people who are who stand right there waiting to see if you need any help or waiting to see like we if we go walk around and touch something they come right behind us and like fix it once you walk away mm -hmm. so i think that's just kind of the customer service the level of customer service that they have here but still you notice a difference between right. the way we receive that or the way it's given to us and others in the same store so right right yeah. Um, and then you can see them talking on the walkie-talkies as they're trying to tell people where we're at in the store, which is rude. Yeah. I mean, let's just be honest. It's, it's freaking rude. Yeah. And um, like I said, we're not stealing anything. We're shopping, and we're generally spending uh, quite a bit of money when we go shopping because we don't shop that often. Right. So when we do, we're doing either our weekly shopping, our monthly shopping, or our bi-weekly shopping, however we're going to do it uh, for that time frame. And we're looking for items that we need. You know, we may end up, um, when we generally get to a new area, a new country, a new city, we're having to resupply a lot of things or re-up a lot of things. So we go and we spend quite a bit of money um, to, to get back to what we, our comfort level in the kitchen, in the bedroom, uh, how we sleep, how we walk around the house, things of that nature. Stuff that we can't take because baggage fees are ridiculous. Uh, so we, cut, we, we lose a few things every time we move, but it's the cost of shop. I mean, of traveling in Southeast Asia. Okay. Treatment wise, what do you think treatment wise on a on a day to day basis? How do you think we we're treated? Um, I mean, I mean I'm, what's present now is where we are. So where mm -hmm. we are, um, I I personally think that Vietnam is exceptional from other places that we've been. I think um, I think that we get a lot less um, stares. I think we get, but I, I think it's also because of where we are in Vietnam. And because we're somewhere where that's mostly focused on maybe foreigners and people that have money in Vietnam. So I, that might have something to do with it. So I don't want to, you know, totally just make a blanket statement. But in general, um, I think we're a curiosity, um, probably, which is irritating um, in general in our in our travels in Southeast Asia. Um, we haven't had anything malicious. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, and I can't really say that I expected that either, um, especially after being in Cambodia for a little while, it just, we just never, I just, I almost felt like I was around, like, brothers and sisters, a little bit. In Cambodia. In Cambodia. It, it gets, it feels like that a little. The people mm -hmm. there are just kind of, I don't know, it's something about them that reminds me of black folks at the cookout, I don't know. Because they like the party. They, they do. <laughs> you do. They'll celebrate it. Uh, yeah. With some loud music, get some beer. Uh, yeah, I think treatment is okay. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say that it's great here. I'm not gonna say it's bad here. I'm. I'm gonna say that it's average uh, about what we've experienced. I think it's it's lighter than in some areas. Yeah. I like Malaysia, but I felt like as time went on, that I could see things changing there. Yeah. Uh, sure. Doesn't mean I won't ever go back. It just means that I go back with a jaded eye. Cambodia, uh, we really never had a problem in Cambodia. I, I really can't say we did. Bali, we got stairs in Bali. Yeah. Singapore, 
We actually didn't get stares in Singapore, which is really interesting to me. There's all kinds of people in Singapore, yeah. though, and it's all and there's so much business there. I think there are yeah. people, so many international mm-hmm. um, business people there that it's just not even. It just costs too much to live there. But that, yeah. So yeah, I think the, uh, I guess if you Thailand was interesting, but I love Thailand, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, on a scale of one to ten, treatment wise, we I have to give it an eight, eight point five. You know, compared to being in the U.S., yeah, we can walk around here and not think too much about anything. Uh, Vietnam is really safe too. Like I feel safe here. Uh, even saying that, I'm still not gonna go to certain areas because it's just right. you know I ain't local. I don't speak the language, and uh, they're not gonna watch me go on my phone and put a Google Translate so I can tell them why I'm in this, their neighborhood. So. Right. With that being said, and and I've also had people go out of their way here to speak to me. Like I pretty much when I'm walking, I'm like in my zone, in my zone, in my zone. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've had people like you know get in my face, like hi, you know, type of thing. It's only happened a couple of times, well, a few times actually. Um, and I would have thought it was oh, that's just their thing to do because they work here. You know, they're supposed to be nice, but it wasn't just you know somebody who worked here. It was also a couple of residents that's done the same thing. So, you know, that you have to, I don't know, there's something about that to me. They don't have to do that because I'm certainly not going out of my way to be extra with anybody right. who's not trying to be that with me. So I just, I did take that into account. Yeah, so basically racism does exist in Southeast Asia. Discrimination does exist. Um, and it, some of the, the, the things that you have to think about when a lot of people want to move overseas and think, well, I can teach English and things like that. If you're darker hued, um, hey, you may not you may, may not get the same opportunities as a white person. Um, you may not get the same pay. Uh, but even, think, even saying that, they don't even hire their own people. And they can speak perfectly fine English um, because they've been taught that white is right. And so a white person can teach English better. And it doesn't have to even be a native English speaker that's white. They're just white. And that's that's the reality of life. Um, and if anybody has any disagreement with that, feel free to drop me a line. And I can point you in a direction that will prove to you that I'm right. Um, but we have met some people um, along the way, some some people of color who are right. teaching. Oh, so definitely. I don't know if they got their job in the States or if they got their job like after they mm-hmm. you know arrived type of thing. You know, because I would imagine if you're in Asia and you say hey I want to teach they'd probably be like sure come on um, I don't yeah. know you said no Mm-mm. it didn't always happen so you think Asia. it's probably they I'm, probably already secured that job no no I'm not saying that at all what oh. I'm saying is, is that it's not going to be as easy as that oh right okay. I, I'm in the group so probably a lot more than um, Amber is I was going to call her by a nickname but I'm in the groups that really talk about those things a lot more and that yeah they were just talking about it yesterday because everybody's talking about what's going on in America. And that was one of the, the sticking points is that a black person, a white person, and an Asian person could apply for the same teaching position. Right. And the white person will get it. They could be sitting across from the desk and the white person will still get it. And the white person doesn't have to have English uh, a degree, mm-hmm. doesn't have English as a first language, any of that. The other two could have degrees. Um, they could both speak English perfectly. And I promise you, the white person will get the job. It's just that, just yeah. the the love. white is right. Right. No, I I can see that. I'm just saying that. But we, you know, we know that there are people who are, and I'm just wondering if the people of color who are teaching, if they they already started off doing, like if they were already teachers, they had a teaching mm-hmm. background, and so it was, you know, it was just easier for them mm-hmm. to get a position, or if they decided I'm going to travel, and then they got to where they were going, and they you know, we're able to do it. I just wonder, but, you know, I mean, obviously there are examples of people who do, but right. when well, it's I'm us not saying you can't do it. I'm just saying that it's not going to be as easy as that. Right. right. Um, a white person could go and get a job quickly. A black person or an Asian person is going to take a little bit longer. Right. So, to me, like, I could quit, if I was white, I could quite quit my job tomorrow and have another teaching gig in a week. A black person may take a month. Yeah. You know, and you still may not get paid the same. Mm. So just just keep that in mind. Um, we've talked about the looks that we get when we're walking around. China was horrible. Other parts of Southeast Asia have been fine. I mean, we get looks. I got pictures that actually be taken in Bali, which 
I'm okay with it. <laughs> if you ask, I have no problem with that. Just don't snap pictures of me or film me as they do in China. She did whole photo shoots, people. Whole they photo were very shoots. Nice. In Indonesia, nice. in Cambodia. They were very nice. I was like, can I hold your bag for you, man? If, it, if, <laughs> if I had not been to China where they were so rude, I probably wouldn't have. But because I had been to China, I had been irked the entire time I was there. <clears throat> Everywhere else was polite and nice, and they make you know they and they great pictures. That's true. I wish I got someone sent my way. I was smiling beautifully. Um, so, racism does exist in Southeast Asia. And I just keep reiterating that because I don't want anybody to say it doesn't because it does. There's just different levels. It's nowhere near the levels of America. Thankfully, well, hopefully, we'll never be that way. But it does exist. Expect some discrimination, uh, not a lot. Expect some slight treatment. Not a lot, uh, but uh, yeah, I think you'll be fine here. I don't, I don't really see them being a problem. My issue is mm-hmm. access to the of things course. that we need, because I have needs. There are things that I require for my. You got to clarify that. Though. So products, hair products, skin products, clothes, shoes, like, yeah, and I'm not a superficial person at all, at all, but. You know, a sister needs moisturizing, okay? A sister needs that. And you are hard-pressed to find any kind of shea butter, cocoa butter, any kind of butter that is for made for black skin. You will be hard-pressed to find it. And we cannot get Amazon wherever we go. Right. So, it's an issue. And I just recently, and after a year, y'all, just recently got something a product that has shea butter in it so my skin is like doing all types of cartwheels over here but it's real and the same with hair products like you cannot find the hair products that you're used to and these things are these are not things that bar you from leaving your comfort zone and going to a different country they're not it's just things to be to consider and know that you have to find alternatives and you have to be flexible and Mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff and so but you do have to think about it because if not you're going to end up in a situation where you're like oh my gosh oh my gosh it's better to just like you know suck it up and wrap your head around it and be prepared to make those changes as you travel right that's it most of the uh, skin products that amber's talking about reason why they don't work for us is they're they're um whitening agents in them true so uh if you like your skin tone and you're not trying to get lighter, right. then you pretty much can't use almost any of the products. It may not even mention it on the label, but it's in there. Um, I don't even seen lotion, so I don't even know if they even offer it. Um, clothes. If you're over a size 8, you are pretty much screwed. Um, even the big sizes, once you wash it once, it's not going to be big anymore. When I say big, I'm like 12, 14. Right. Um, shoes. Oh my God! I mean, I, I needed some sneakers. We went to like ten stores before I could find some sneakers, and I wear eight and a half. Um, and they're ugly, but I just needed a pair of sneakers. I mean, right. but they didn't have them in my size, and women <clears throat> didn't have them. Um, so those are the things she's talking about. And I have eczema, I have allergies, right. and things like that. So I'm always cognizant of my skin. I'm always cognizant of my meds. So you always got to make sure that they have that. You don't really have a problem with medicines as much. No. You just have to take what you got, show it to the pharmacist, and hopefully they'll be able to give you an alternative. It just probably won't be what you're used to, yeah. but it'll work out in the end. Um, but yeah, the products, yeah. Yeah, we just no found... No shampoo. No, we just found a mini mart here that's owned by a brother. And his and stuff is overpriced. It is, but I, ooh, when I tell you I'm thankful for him, I mean, and that place didn't hardly have anything, mm-hmm. but when they restocked, They'll have a lot of the things that, you know, I would, we would actually need to use. But, like I said, it's taken a year <laughs> for us to find a place like that. So, yeah. <laughs> so. so um, that is our viewpoint. Oh, gosh, we didn't even mention being gay. Oh, what's your name? We're gay. <laughs> and we're traveling Southeast Asia. Oh, I apologize. So Has gay. there been an issue? So gay. No. Nah. Hadn't been an issue. Now, let me preface that by saying, can it be an issue? Hell yeah. It can be an issue, depending on which country you want to go to right. and how you want to be out. 
we're comfortably out. We're married. Somebody able to ask me, this is my wife. I would introduce her as my wife. She would do the same. I don't have a problem with it. There are certain cultures where there is going to be a problem. Malaysia was one country Malaysia. that we were a little bit tense. And then I just said, screw it. We're visitors here. We're not planning on staying here forever. So we're just going to be who we are. If they have a problem, they'll let us know. Blah, blah, blah. We'll go from there. Um, Cambodia. But wasn't it Malaysia where we saw, like, a mad gay, gay people? people like, every time we went out, we were like, what's up, guess. sis? What's right. up, fam? I mean, you know, not outwardly, but in our heads. Everywhere. A lot of couples. In Cambodia? Yeah. Cambodia, you can be gay. Yeah. Thailand, you can be gay. Vietnam, you can be gay. Is it legal? Not all those countries. But they're not going to do anything about it. People walking around, living their life. Living their best rainbow life here, y'all. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's it. Just be cognizant of where you want to go in Southeast Asia. Uh, Singapore, I probably wouldn't be as out. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's probably about the only country I really would flag. Mm-hmm. Um, religious. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for religious reasons. I mean, in Malaysia, it's the same thing. Because, you know, basically, we're the same country at one point. They split. So there's still that that thread there, yeah. and uh, I think both will prosecute men, but they mm-hmm. don't prosecute women. Mm-hmm. So just just keep those thoughts in mind. But other than that, though, man, I think we have been a very free, very easy. Nobody's questioned us. Uh, nobody's mm-hmm. asked too many questions. I said this to my wife. They go, oh, okay, right, yeah, and we just move on with our day. That's true. Um, I almost feel like I'm not coming out as much as I did in the United States, which is interesting. Hmm. But in the U.S., I felt like I was coming out all the freaking time. Because hmm. you know, you're a black woman, and you walking with a black woman. Are you friends? Right. Oh, you sisters? Wife. You right. sisters? Oh, why? What are you talking about? Right. So, yeah. That's I think true. that's, that's. I mean, in a nutshell, that's the easiest part of our journey. Yeah. And the part we were sort of worried about. And, you know, I think we should say that with a disclaimer, probably, because obviously everyone's experience is not ours. The way we present is different than the way um, the, the way some queer people present and which may, may you know, bring Change other it. kinds of attention. Right. Um, and so they have a different experience. So we certainly don't want to speak for everyone queer. We're just saying. Oh, no, we're not. Yeah, yeah. We're just saying this has been our, our experience. And um, I don't know hopefully you can. You know, get learn something from that. You can yeah. take it and do with it what you will. Yeah. yeah. No, it's totally our experience. This entire yeah. year has been a growth. Uh, I mean, opportunity for growth for us. We're excited. We're happy. Uh, we've changed so much. Our viewpoint on life has changed. We're relaxed. Whew. You don't realize how much stress and strain of being a black gay woman in America mm-hmm. puts on you and, and your job home life even, your friends, your family, here it's just us, we're making it, we're surviving, we're happy, we're not broke, we're not hungry, we're not stressed, we can walk the streets, we can get a cup of coffee, we eat, we don't get, we gain weight with Amber. Hey, hey. We we gain weight, because I cook as she is. Happy weight. Very happy weight. So, yeah, life is uh, great. Yeah. And yeah. we encourage anyone who wants to travel to do it now. The world is changing due to corona, so who knows what travel is going to look like in the next few years. Um, but if you get the opportunity to fly, fly high and go. And that's our lesson of the day. Right, right on, right on. That's right. That's right. So- Anyway, I am Kat. I am Amber. And this is our vlog on being black in Southeast Asia and being gay. Check us out, wonderingsoup.com for our blog, Wondering Soup on YouTube for our channel. Please like, subscribe, and follow. Share with your friends. Um, we're trying to get those views up. So we're giving some good information out. Let us know what you want us to talk about. We'll see you next week. Peace and love. Bye, y'all.